All right, Karachi S and D. Let's get into game two. Big game two. Another Karachi, but this time we're going to search. We already really know how this one ends. Two two strat on our defense. Ken's gonna go to the bus stop. Ant's gonna go towards low ticket. For our B sided, we're gonna have low cash and uh, I guess who's I guess they're both low cash, right? Yeah, they're both low cash, and I think Bra yeah, Brandon is gonna go to top fountain. But what do you know? Paco is already there. So this is a really annoying part for for like me and Damon because we talked about this opening that teams were taking us like towards top fountain because we were doing it ourselves. Like Ant was always doing this shit. And in this specific type of scenario, we just have no eyes on anyone doing this type of strat. So we have no eyes on mid, but not only do we have no eyes on mid, because I mean, the only eyes we have is if they push through short and Ken has this, but if, if they go top fountain, we have no idea. So I don't, I personally didn't care for this and it just allows Paco to get pushed up for free because they go 2-2, two, two, but they send, you know, two guys mid, one guy's going to go top AC, and that's Paco. Age is going to try and take a timing through the smoke here at the front arches. Dies for it. managing to catch a pred. A massive first blood as well. You're in absolutely no rush. So like Brandon is now refilled low cash, but we still have a guy in our top fountain. They're getting the bomb down. This this is just just lost. Like be any follow up from the nades. Sib wins the next gunfight as well. And Sib might just be called. And Dante gets two. He's just playing the credi here. The mid credi. This is we just didn't have mid control. No mid control. I have no idea what the fuck they're doing mid. And they were just pushed up in our shit. Subliners right back in the game. That round was so fast. I don't know if anyone managed to turn on the dash. 300 day was a mafia guys may or may not use. So we go on our first offense. They're 2 2 as well. This was just a, a bang B strat. So we have our two guys going low coop. One guy goes top third. The other guy goes bricks. All four players from Optic. So those, those guys watch middle. Number three is going to pick up the deep pinch. You just get the bomb. Get the bomb down. Again, you get the bomb down on B. Such a high win rate. Now you just play the bridge. It should be very, very difficult for a retake. Just takes way too long, and you have to clear so much. That's important. We know this guy goes low as bridge. Ken picks it up. He ends up getting traded, but they still we still have Ant over here too. They're not expecting us to play double bridge, I guess. Yeah, now we just help each other out. And how many rounds have we seen like that of the bomb being that environment? Pick it up. This Karachi B site in general was just it was. I think if I had to go back and look at the data, I'm pretty sure it was the hardest retake. I think I th I want to say it was like 86% win rate on offense if you got it down. Okay, this this is an annoying round because okay, usually Ken isn't going deep like this, but in this specific strat, he like he usually would go like top plat or something, but in the, or or on the left side. But he doesn't have short or or the, the the middle for us. He'll usually like he would usually sometimes tack it or whatever. Paco goes free up our short, and he I think I'm pretty sure Ken even said to Brandon that this guy could could hit our ladder, but Brandon must not have uh, taken it in and realized that this guy could have been here so quickly, because this was the lens thing. You know we we lost to Minnesota in, in like what is it stage four qualifiers. Willens would just push our bar mid, climb the ladder, and get a free first blood on us. So Ken was like realizing in this specific strat that could happen because and going mid cut like this doesn't have the timing to see Paco go here. So he knows this timing is here. And usually Brandon's the one playing the right side. 
And uh, he just gets up to top plat for free and can kill Brandon. Free first blood for them. This is this is just annoying because it's like can, uh, Brandon usually isn't that is, isn't in that position, and we know that they could get up for, like for free like that. And then they just break us apart. So you see how one little mistake or one little thing that goes un unseen or unaccounted for can completely fuck up around. We go for an eight hit this time. They themselves have Kismet alone today. He's their lone A player. He was their lone A player for the most part. Sometimes they'd have two people there, like Paco as well, but usually it was just him lone A. A send three people B. And AG's just here alone, and he's just trying to buy time for all of these people to take attention away from him as we bang A. Surprised they didn't make more motions towards A once they didn't see anything B and didn't see anything mid. But they're just uh, relying on Kiz to try and get something here for them to help them out. And we don't clear that specific corner. He gets one. They get the kill on AG as he was backing up. Now it's a 2v3. Ken and Brandon. So because they all push forward here on the B side and no one like wraps back, we're able to take their side. So you see number four, Brandon. He takes their long and can now play from their side. Once Ken gets his bomb down, he goes ticket. They know he's basically ticket, but they don't know where Brandon is. Brandon, huge read on this guy Dome. I think this is a good play by Caesar to go deep dome like this, but Brandon is just reading this. Kills, kills Caesar for free. Now, based on what Ken is doing, he's gone over towards Diner and he's just trying to watch for anyone that might be coming from fire or ticket and just get information on them so that he can stay alive, maybe get a kill, but at least buy some time so that Brandon can get back to him. Him on top of this bus shot for so long. Dashi finds one. one. She sees them jump out. Reads that Paco's gonna go straight to bomb. As soon as that's happening, Brandon is now hitting through towards uh, top fire from mid. And he should get this kill on, on Dante. Easy. Really good 2v3. It's shenanigans from Kenny. The sneaky move to cross the bomb site. Leaves New York guessing and finds that kill. Yeah, I want to see the actual timing of him crossing towards the diner side. Because he first he first goes towards ticket. They see him go ticket, so he knows that. But they give it up for that one second. And as so, even though he's weak, he assumes they're gonna readjust. He goes boom towards diner. Now that he's playing this side, they think he's ticket, but he's not. He's able to make the jump. They saw him cross the red. He's like a ghost. He's out towards bus. Kenny, though, would have guessed right. We've seen him on top of this bus shot for so long. Dashi finds one. One. Two spotted. Kenny really good job. By Ken. Down a sip. And for Brandon for reading that dome pinch. It's shenanigans from Kenny. The sneaky move to cross the bomb site. Leaves New York guessing and finds that kill. In a mishap. In a bit. To find the New York do have the edge over Optic Texas in search and destroy throughout the season, but right now all square. Lucy this time instead of 2A, we go 3B. And subliners a full staff. We have Ken alone at A. We have and we're just basically stacking fountain in low cash. We're going all in. Starting to run out of nades. The lethals, the tank all in. Starting to run out of nades. The lethals, the tacticals are being expended. No trophy to be found. They haven't it B yet, but they, we know they're coop side. So that's why Ken and Brandon are going to work towards middle, try and get people towards top three and bricks. And they get a kill towards here. That's huge. They don't get a kill, but they back them down. It, like, sorry. They don't back them down, but if there was someone there, they would have backed them down. Regardless, no one's there. This gives Ant some freedom to push up to AC. They're not watching AC. Gets a kill on Caesar. So they leave that open. They still don't have the bomb down. AG is hiding in the smoke. Gets a free kill himself. He can try and finesse a little bit. Sees Dante go back bridge. He's going to call out to number two and number one to work that guy with him. And ends up getting the kill. 
I think this is where uh, Brandon was like, nice shots or whatever. <laughs> because Ant gets this kill from top AC. He must, he must just instantly sh like snap on him or something. Because I remember, I'm pretty sure that's where Brandon called that out. 3v1 now. No bomb down. We just know he's cool. Easy, easy pickings. So the, what, what number one and number four were doing here, they're just team working short in case someone's bricks. And, you know, number five is bricks here. Caesar is bricks. But either he sees them and backs off. I don't know if he sees them and backs off. I'm pretty sure he sees them, right? He doesn't shoot at them, but at this moment, they have to see each other, right? I don't know if either of them shoots. Anyone shoots? No one shoots, but at least, I don't know, at least backs them off and it just allows Ant to get pushed up in the AC. This is a big thing because if, if you're on the offense here, you should not be letting them get up to AC like this for free. That's why I always liked, or I always liked us pushing up AC to, to found like, like the, the Paco play you saw in round one and the thing Ant would always do. But Paco doesn't go AC in this round and they leave AC open for free and Ant's able to just climb up there and make a play for the first blood. Uh, good plays regardless. Is still not electing to use that wall bang spot, but now Kenny, the island player, over towards A. If Kismet ever bites on the flank, might get more than he can chew. I don't know, man. We've seen kids in these moments. Kind of standard spread on both sides. One guy A for them again, Kismet, lone guy A. You have top plat, someone bottom cash, I guess, with Paco who is playing the low scaff. On, on our end, Ken's. Far right side, we have another AR, middle, the two subs, low coop. Just full on spread, kind of just playing info, see what we get. See if anyone scams and make a, makes a play on their team or, or uh, we just see any info that we like and adjust to it. We've seen kids in these moments. 99 kids can shoot plenty. Creeping towards that B bomb site, unbelievably close. Ken's now going to make some plays towards top fire and see if he can make some type of lurk play while we try and bang out B. He makes a lurk play, sees Kismet. He actually doesn't get the kill, but he, he does back Kismet down top bus. Because of Ken's play here, this lurk, even though he doesn't get the kill, he, he, he drags one away from B. Only drags one, he drags two. He drives five and six. They're leaving Paco alone at, at, at uh, top AC. He can actually get a kill on Ant while we're trying to plant, which could be really big. Yeah, unfortunately, that's big. Uh, like, if we had AC ourselves again, this is just a free bomb plant. This is unfortunate. I thought this, this round could have easily been won. If we, if we just hold top AC for Ant while he's planting, we just win the round. Because I like the play by Ken. He drags people off, but Paco makes a play as the lone guy towards B side. This is the problem with on offense, like leaving top AC open. I guess I guess Ant thinks that he smoked himself out and he can't see him from top AC, but the smoke isn't perfect. Yeah, the smoke just isn't good enough. It doesn't cover him. It covers him from everything else, but not from top AC. Well, that's a big one. First blood and the smoke and joke. Here we go. And then Ken tries to make a play. He just gets picked for it. 2v4 now. It's just too hard. No bomb down. Paco, I mean, Pago just makes the play there. AC. If, we, if we're covering AC, I think we win that round. Easily. Alright, we go back on defense. Another fully quick uh, mid pressure by New York too. So we don't we don't see them mid. We're just playing holding tight. Kiz has already gotten our to our top uh, fire like this. They're already pushing up through a mid cut. So we realize that you know there's nothing B. We don't see anything A. So we know that they could be mid. The only thing is again, what do we not have? Top AC to top fountain. Don't have top AC to top fountain, we, they get a free first blood for free.
So that's two rounds now where it's, I mean, they didn't get the first blood in the first round like that, but the fact that he's able to get there and make some sort of chaotic play because he, he knows that he has the positioning there and, and, and we don't is the problem. So this is, me and Damon were getting so pissed in the back. We were just like, why, why we, we know this guy does this. We do it ourselves. Why are we not looking for the possibility that they just go top AC and make a play like this? We literally have nothing on the map, you know? Three v four. they have all mid pressure, all mid control. And makes a play. Actually gets, I mean, they get two, how do they? Everyone is just so close, they can smell it. There's the red dot checked. Everyone is just so close, they can smell it. There's the red dot starting to work out. A lot of noise. Shots from down low. Smell it. There's the right time where you got to be checked. Okay, so this is the beauty of being able to finesse because we have much more to work, much more space to work with. Like, we've we already have all of fire, we can have someone top plat too. They they're like. They haven't done something together and they're all like kind of sandwiched if that makes sense so they're just trying to make a play from top red over here but we have like all the exits that are required for them to get anywhere if that makes sense so if there's a three four that's a great scenario for us to you know get kills try and finesse with each other and just play off of each other from where we're actually positioned is ants able to get a free kill the other guy is top, you know, fire over here. So they're not working together. We have both exits for that guy. Now, now we just work him. Now it's a 3v2 bomb down. Last two guys are all IB with no bomb to work with. So they get the free first blood fountain, but it would have been great if they were able to get towards B side. The thing is like, they kind of don't know what they want to do because they have two guys working with each other and two guys working with each other. But if one of these guys dies, it's on the other guy to get a trade or, or something else. But if we teamwork this guy or, or what, like if we get two kills without getting one or without them getting one, they're fucked. And that's what happens. You got no idea, man. They're in the room with you. They're right next door. Will you check it? Will you check it in the right time? Are you going to be checked? Everyone is just so close. They can smell it. There's the red dot starting to work out. Like, honestly, what probably needs to happen Everyone is while these guys are like kind of trapped inside red eight and five have to do something to make a player or work to get try and either get towards them or something because like they're I, obviously they're they're looking for for ag here or they're looking for someone's on the right side but they're not activating themselves so it causes kids and whoever to move kids and dante and they just picked the wrong site because we're we're stacked in red. Three v two. We just gotta watch our crosses. Paku gets one short, but team kills him in the in the process. He had to a team kill them to get the, the kill. Now one v two. We see him fountain. We realize he's gonna go B. Ken is still watching low fountain just in case he just hit fountain and went back, expecting us to to wrap towards B. But he actually ends up going B anyways. He he feels that's his best way to win. And then Ant just nades this, so he knows he's there. And then and then shots him. Has four first blood, so he is on a record setting pace. Does not matter if you don't get Paco. What was it? Paco has four first blood? Is that what? Record get the score line, but Hydra currently has yeah, Paco has four, four first bloods. Blood, so he is on a record setting pace. Does not matter if you don't get the dub. Oh, not at all. Can he with a bomb this time? Four off Texas, two two split. Subline is a little more evenly spread across the map. Can he with a bomb this time? Four off so 2-2 two, two split, we're trying to like fake towards B, go A. The thing here though is uh... This is just a hard read by Paco. He jumps off plat. 
goes top fire and and just instantly reads that you know he can go top fire here and that's why, why ant dies i i personally would like to have one of our guys go over here just to at least see the possibility for paco to jump like that so you can get the information to paco so that paco while he's like going this way ant already knows that he could be pushed up and and challenging him but this is just a one-on-one -on -one first blood battle and paco gets another first blood like we need to get an information on him pos like a possibility of them doing that first if possible so like maybe maybe one of one of ag or brandon because i i don't mind i i like ken going with there with them too in case it's free and open and they just teamwork a together but yeah hydra he woke up and chose violence Kenny. The worst part about this is, this round is I'm pretty sure Ken knows that Kiz is going top single here. Because we did VOD obviously and he remembered in this very moment like you know Kiz can go top Kiz is probably going to play top single this round. He literally calls it out. I, I want to see if I can find the comps for that because he's literally like you know Kiz is going to play top single this round. Like I can feel it because obviously we watched the VOD. We, we know he hasn't really played it yet. Unfortunately, pa uh, Ant dies first blood right here, though. Like, if, if, if Paco had gone B site here instead, we 100% work Kismet out of, out of top single because we're playing off of that read. That's unfortunate. Because, dude, Kenneth called it so well, too. I was like, what the fuck? How does he know he's going top single? And Paco just beams Ken. Holy fuck. Dashi last man. Swinging. But it is no good. The subliner. This year is Edmonton right now. Hydra delivering for his team. The New York Hype Squad. The friends and family in attendance. Trying to will their players to a I four four. Back to back. He's played in green. He's climbed up the ladder. He's gone down barrel alley. Now he's going up top. What do you ladder. know? Paco going top found once again. What do we not have? Top fountain. He's gone down barrel alley. Now he's going up top ladder. Hey, AG tries to pick it up, but it's it's a little bit too late. I don't think he can see him. Yeah, he doesn't see him at that point. If he did this earlier, we would have seen him. But again, what three offenses now where he's done the same thing and we're not adjusting? That's in that was the annoying part for me and Damon during this specific search. He gets another first blood on it. Gets another kill on Ken. We're just giving him the ace now. We're literally just giving it him for him to work with. I don't know what the hell this was. And it may fall into his lap as every other kill has. Moment. This is what the ace destroyed. And so many different routes for a Hydra to be taken. All right, four five. Huge round for us to win because obviously we need to win it to force around eleven. Dante crosses towards bridge. We're on our regular B setup. Ant going towards top AC. He st stays alive, which is massive. Other guys still, same thing. Watching short from top third. Number three is going to watch our pinch. We're eventually going to try and work this guy bridge to get the bomb down. And in this specific strat, they have two guys A side too, which is important for us because if we're going full B, much easier for us to get it down. They're just they're just relying on Dante staying alive here. We're waiting for for lurkers to kind of activate while this is happening. That's why we aren't like pushing right away. Now and himself. Still being gained. They don't have they don't have mid. They they've given up mid. Lot of damage. So Ann himself is gonna push up mid from P1. This is a this is a ballsy play. Ballsy play round ten champs grand finals. Doesn't see anything bus or bus stop. We know there's one guy top dome, he's gonna go and climb the ladder and, and shoot for this guy. First blood, free first blood. We know other guy is definitely uh bridge, you know, Dante. We see this guy shooting, Kismet, he's top fire. AG doesn't die yet, but yeah, eventually dies to Paco. But we need to, we need to turn work Dante over here. He gets one kill, gets straight out, but 
That's all we needed because the other two guys were, were playing B side or sorry A side. That's a bomb down right there. They're gonna cruise here too, but the cruise comes a little bit too late because number one Ken is able to hide underneath the bridge and Brandon's able to hide inside fountain. So the the, the cruise missile does not land. They know where we're, where we're at basically, but it, it does not land. Kiz throws a nade towards bridge here to see if he can like find something or just find information on if we did cross to bridge or playing bridge. So we know ourselves that they're one guy's at least coop. Ken sees him here, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if he actually no, he doesn't see him, but he knows he's there from the nade. I don't think he sees him in that specific thing right there where you where you see his little head. But they're in such good positions to clutch this, like being able to go top fountain and being a live bridge is is very 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 good. They only have twenty five seconds to work with. They smoke. Paco goes top AC. He's waiting for people to you know full pinch late from fountain to P one. They have to hit the bomb now though. They have to get some type of kills because we're just playing bridge. Paco jumps out, sees Brandon bottom fountain. And or sorry, low cash. We call it low cash. This is such a massive one v one. I I talk about this in the other video, but him losing this one v one here, uh, like it, there would have been a chance for uh, actually they would have legit just won the round because kids wins wins this one on Ken here on the bridge, but Brian, Brandon winning this one v one gives us enough time where you know kids has to get the kill on Brandon. And he can't defuse. We win the round. Brandon winning this 1v1 is so massive. I don't know how he wins it. He wall bangs in with the AR while Paco has a sub. But that's a that's a butt clench moment. That's a huge one. Now we go round 11. They don't have the streak to work with anymore. And we know how this round plays out. We've I've talked about it already, but I'll, I'll do it once again. We go into the round. All right, we need we need a trophy for Nimid. We we don't want to chow the New York nades. Though we need a trophy. You know, you got quick fit or you got a quick grip, and has quick grip. He throws a trophy. A little bit too late. Ken dies in a three v four to start the round. Not ideal. Once again, they they hold with their two two strat. Paco the the two subs towards a side. But what they do is they they let you know Ant make a play here. There is simply no one like him. And it goes top AC to top fountain, the same shit. You know, Paco is doing, but he gets a kill with, with Kiz. The bottom stairs. Even though they know he's there, I I personally think, like watching it back, I think what they're thinking is they you know, Caesar spots him. Well, we'll talk about it when it actually comes up. And it's the wall thing. But obviously, you know, and tries to make a play top fountain here. We know they're gonna try and play the wall bang as well. We know that they, they like the wall bang. He doesn't see anything fountain. So he sees the door open, but he doesn't see anything fountain. So like, okay, you know, maybe he's low cash or something. Now he sees Caesar at top dome. So he shoots. So they know he's top fountain here. I'm thinking his things since he didn't run down fountain or anything that he's not still up here and that he jumped out back towards like mid or, or what or something else because they don't have eyes on mid. In this specific area, like he could jump out technically out this window and go back to mid. So I'm I'm assuming that's what he's thinking. I'm surprised he didn't like throw attack or something maybe, but I guess he just didn't want to get bad timing and, and scam, you know, the the four v three away. And has to go smoke this for AG because AG can't play safe or plant safe. If AG plants safe, he's he's uh he's not, you know, covered from the wall bang. What he has to do is he has to plant in the open with the smoke so he can cover himself with the bomb because you can't shoot through the bomb for the wall bang. He gets the smoke down for him. He even throws a nade towards that direction to just bait the guy who's trying to possibly wall bang. Ant goes down the stairs. As soon as that's happening, Kiz moves. Ant wins the 1v1. Massive. One of the bigger 1v1s ever that you'll see you know, in these champs finals. Since that happens, it, re it requires Dante to activate as well. 
Because he's like, okay, you know, Ant's bottom fire or bottom fountain. I got to work for this. But while that was happening, Dante wall bangs AG off the bomb. So AG super weak. So he's like, they have a wall bang spot from low cash, which we didn't know about until after. So they, not only did they have the wall bang here, but people don't talk about this enough. They had another wall bang here. So you had a, you know, Dante wall bang here. Caesar is going back to do the same wall bang. So you cannot get the bomb planted if they're doing both the wall bangs at the same time. So AG doesn't die on bomb, gets away with his life and figures, I can't, I can't play B. I'm just rotating the A. And that's just like the play that completely makes this round 11 perfect because, you know, A makes the play to get the, the first blood, but AG hopping off bomb and rotating is the perfect scenario for us because Paco tries to make a play mid, Brandon sees him, Brandon doesn't die from him, but gets information and AG can work off that, get the kill on Paco towards mid, and then we have a free A plant. We know that those are their A players. We can just go to A. We know this guy is low cash because he was wallbanging him and Ant saw him on his minimap. Ant can now play the cutoff. So this guy can't even get to A. Ant plays the cutoff, kills Dante, 3v1 now. All we need to do is, is get sure, make sure the plant goes down because it's, you know, eight seconds. If he kills us off bomb, we lose. Get the bomb down and we, we just win, win the round 11. They have a trophy for the wall, dude, that's what I'm saying, Ryan, bro, like... And throws a nade, but they have a trophy for it, too. Which is crazy. Huge game two win. Really good round 10 and 11. What did, what did Paco finish? He had seven first bloods? That's insane.